Hey guys, it's your friend. Hey guys, it's your friend John here. And guess what? Today is a very special day. Today is the one year anniversary since I started my channel. That is right. One full year from this day when I started my channel. I'm still here. It's a miracle. No one canceled me. For my one year anniversary, I'm going to do something very special. I'm going to make the very first weapon that I made in my very first video. That's right. I'm going to be making a... Uh, what did I make my... What was my first weapon I made? Hold, hold on one minute. Uh, come, uh, come on. There we go. Glasses. Damn it. All right. Uh, what was it again? Oh, here it is. Uh, a medieval maze. I'll be making a medieval maze for this video, only it's going to be much better than the first one I made. In order to make this weapon, the first thing you need are a long wooden pole, a croquet ball, or a wooden ball made out of hardwood, a bunch of metal nails, you're also going to need a small wooden ball, some cord, and one small shorter sized nail. Those are going to be all the things you need to make this mace. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out my pole and see how long I want my handle to be. So I'm going to mark it out at 19 inches because I think that's a pretty good length to have a handle at. Now I'm going to cut it right on the mark. Next step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a marker and I'm going to put marker points all around my wood ball so when I start drilling holes, I know exactly where to drill my holes so none of the spikes that go in the holes will be off-center or misaligned. So the first thing I'm going to do is I took a roll of tape and I put it on the bottom of the ball and that's going to help me make a line that's evenly, evenly across on the bottom. And then you do the exact same thing but on the other side. And then you flip it around and do the exact same thing. There we go. Now I know where my uh, marks are. It's better than nothing. I also put little marker points around the ball after I marked it out with the lines. That will give me an idea of where I need to drill my holes for when I put my metal spikes in. So once you get yourself all set up, you're going to drill a hole right here, right for the handle to go in. And I'm going to use a smaller drill bit, and as time goes by, I'm going to use a bigger drill bit and get bigger and bigger and bigger until my handle is able to fit into that hole properly. Because I was having such a hard time drilling this hole in this ball, what I did is I'm going to take a little bit of water and I'm going to pour some water in there. Now I'm going to let that water sit for a little bit so when I start drilling it, the wood will be a lot softer and a lot easier to drill out.
So now that I finished drilling my hole right here, there's a little bit of a problem, and that is this pole right here is a little too thick, and it won't fit all the way in. So what I'm going to do is I want to go to the belt sander, and I'm going to sand down this top part right here and make it a little bit smaller so it can better fit in this hole. So when I stick it in, it goes all the way in and not just up to here. Now that I finished sanding down this top part right here on my wind pole, so it's more like a spike or a point and not flat like it was before, it will now properly fit in this hole. As you can see, it's a lot deeper in that hole than it was before, so when I glue it in, it will be a lot more secure. But I'm not going to glue it in just yet. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a drill and I'm going to start drilling out little holes right where I put my markers. And what those holes are going to be for, they're going to be for my spikes for when I finally put them in. Now that I finished drilling out all my little holes in my wood ball for my metal spike, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take all these metal nails and I'm going to turn each one of these metal nails into a little spike like this. I got to turn all of these nails into that. That's going to be a lot of work. I got my nail right here in a vise. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this flat part right here off. To make sure that your spike has an even point on this end, what you can do is you can take your nail and you can stick it in a drill like you would a drill bit. And as you're sanding it down on a belt sander, you just turn the drill on like this. And as you're turning it on, you'll get a good even point once you're done. Now you can see it went from nail, to nail with no end, to double-ended spike, to a clean double-ended spike when I clean both ends. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut it in half so I have two individual spikes. Now that I have everything done, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take my wood pole right here and I'm going to take it to the belt sander again. And I'm going to give it a more comfortable handle right here on the bottom so when I grab it, it fits my palm much better than it would without anything here. So as you can see, I got it marked out where I'm going to sand it, and now I'm going to take the belt sander, and I'm going to start sanding it, and these markers are going to help guide me so I know where I need to go when I sand it down so I don't screw it up. Now that I finished sanding down the handle on my pole so it's more comfortable to grab and has a better curved feel versus just it being flat, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to pour some glue in here. I'm going to use the 24 hour dry Gorilla Glue and I'm going to pour the glue in there first and then I'm going to stick the handle in next. Make sure when you put your wood handle in, it's straight and not leaning one side or the other. You want to make sure it's straight in there so it's not going to be crooked when it's finished drying. If you have a large gap when you put your wooden pole in that ball, you can easily fix it by taking some wood toothpicks or wooden pegs and glue them into that gap. Once they're glued into that gap, cut the little ends that are sticking out. Once you're done, just clean it up with a wet rag and let it dry after that. Finally, just file it down so it's nice and smooth, and that should fix the problem. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to clear coat the whole thing. And you probably noticed that the handle part right here looks different. That's because once I finished blow torching it, what I did was I took it back to the belt sander and I started sanding down in these little grooves right in here to really make it stand out so it looks a lot nicer. You also note that I put the ball right here and what I did was, once this was done, I drilled a hole right in the bottom part. 
Then after that, I glued in a metal peg. Once the metal peg was glued in, I took my wood ball, I sanded down one end, and I drilled a hole in it, and then I glued it in here, and then I let it dry for a full 24 hours. Now that the clear coat is finished drying, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take these individual spikes and I'm going to take each one and hammer it in all around each hole. I also put a hole right on here on the very top before there was nothing there and I drilled a deep hole in there and that's going to be for this long spike and this long spike is going to go into this hole and that long spike is going to go all the way in connecting it so when I put this spike in it's going to be in the head and the handle. Once you're done hammering in all the spikes, take a wet rag and just clean it all off and let it sit for a full 24 hours. Ouch! Now that my maze is done, I'm going to test it outside, but before I do, Please make sure you subscribe if you're a new viewer or you haven't before. Hit notifications to so be aware every time I upload a new video. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment, let me know what you think. And if you want to help me get more viewers and possibly more subscribers, please share this video. Thank you. Now that I'm outside, I'm going to test my maze on this pineapple right here. Now, I'm going to test my mace on this block of ice right here. The center of it didn't freeze last night, it's still liquid inside, but it doesn't matter, it's still mostly frozen. So, what are my overall sauce on my mace that I made? I actually like it, and it did a lot better than my last mace. So comparing this mace to my first mace, there's not really that much of a difference. They're both basically made the same way. The only difference is that this one's got spikes on the top where the other one had nail heads, and the wood is thicker. It's made out of thick oak wood, so it's much stronger, and you also have a different handle. But basically, they're kind of the same. And even though they're very similar, I do like this one more. I like the dark wood on the top, and I like this pattern that I did on this handle and this white right here. The light and then the dark and then light and then dark, light, dark. It has a nice pattern to it, so I think the overall look of this one is much nicer than my first one. And this weapon did a lot of damage to both the pineapple and the block of ice. It didn't stand a chance against this weapon, and there is literally no damage on this weapon. It's perfectly clean. So I'm going to wrap things up by saying thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment. Let me know what you think of this video and what I made right here. Also, please remember to follow me on Instagram and also follow me on Reddit. Join my community on Reddit, but please don't follow me in real life. That would just be a little creepy.